Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who cried at the end of Armageddon. I'm here to talk about Sergey Morozov versus Journey Newsom. This is a good fight to start off this awesome card. Morozov's a big favorite here. He's uh, got a deeper resume. He's 18 and five overall, two and two, I believe, in the UFC. Journey Newsom is 10 and three overall, and would be two and two in the UFC if he didn't pop for whatever the fuck. He pissed hot. And his knockout win over Domingo Palarte was overturned, which is a shame because it was a great moment. He knocked him out right as Joe Rogan was starting to praise Palarte and say, oh, this looks like a potentially bad matchup or a fuck. And he went crashing down. It was awesome, but uh, doesn't exist as far as we know now. So he's one, one and two in the UFC with one no contest. Uh, and overall, he's got a record of 10-3. and three. The three losses, he's got two via KO and one via decision. One, uh, all to UFC-level competition. In fact, twice in the UFC he lost. He lost to Randy Costa, who knocked him out with a head kick. When Randy Costa wins, it's via first-round knockout. I think that's still true to this day, unless he's, you know, changed things up since he left the UFC. But uh, he's a front-runner, and he's... A long rangey striker is dangerous. So it all worked out. And look, no matter what, you can praise Randy Costa's offensive prowess and whatever. Still, he cracked Journey Newsom's chin. So it's got me questioning his durability. I'll be honest. His other loss inside the UFC came to Ricardo Hamosh, who is an awesome UFC fighter. He's very good anyway. And uh, he was a step ahead of Journey. He was better than him everywhere. It was largely held on the feet, the fight. But... Um, they did hit the ground. It's the only fight from which we got to see any Journey Newsome jiu-jitsu. And it was mostly defense. You know, uh, Hamosh had his back, but uh, Journey defended himself, you know, uh, and threatened with a few guillotines along the way and whatever. But uh, generally, it was a striking affair. He was playing catch-up. And for a guy who I think he took that fight on short notice, he fared pretty well because he ate a spinning back elbow, which is the signature move from Ricardo Hamos. He's got two knockouts like that in the UFC, and he ate it, and uh, he made it to the final bell. So, you know, I do think Journey Newsom has heart, and I do think he's got good cardio because he need cardio to be able to survive like that, taking a fight on short notice. Uh, also, his cardio seemed to show itself in the Fernie Garcia fight, which wasn't the most taxing fight, so I don't want to make it like, oh, he's a cardio machine. But in general, he lost round one and won rounds two and three. That's a cardio victory. I thought it was an overall MMA victory, too, where he was outgunned in the boxing realm, and he mixed it all together, calf kicks and takedowns and whatever the fuck else, and he clearly outpointed Fernie. And his hands are there for him, too. They were there for him in every fight. Journey Newsom has knockout power. He's one of those shorter, he's like a short counter striker, but he's got that Matt Serra at welterweight thing going, where he's got, you know, he's got big power, and uh, he says, according to him, he's a jujitsu guy, first and foremost, but that hasn't uh, really, you know, uh, gotten him anything so far, he's got three submission victories, and they're all over garbage opponents, and all three of those guys have like at least six submission losses, if not ten, so... You know, it hasn't gotten him any big victories yet, but it hasn't. He hasn't been tapped out either. So this is a fight where who knows? It might show up as jujitsu. The thing is, I don't know if he's got the wrestling to make his jujitsu happen. You know, I don't think he does in this fight. Morozov's got the wrestling advantage. I think Journey Newsom's path to victory against Morozov, whether it's knockout, submission, or decision, any one of them, and obviously knockout is he's got to beat him up on the feet. He's got to hurt him on the feet. Kind of like Douglas Silva D'Andrade did. That's his path to getting a victory via rear naked choke. You know, and uh, certainly via decision, unless he's able to take him down and somehow just win with top position, which I really doubt. I think Journey Newsom, his only way of winning a decision is by hurting Morozov on more than one occasion and stealing rounds that way. The point battle on the feet should belong to Morozov. The wrestling battle, which is, you know, the overall point battle in MMA, uh, sided, sides with Morozov. Morozov, if it goes to a decision, I would heavily favor Morozov. I don't think it's going to go to a decision, though. I question both of their durabilities. You know, I think Journey Newsom, again, he I didn't talk about his other loss. He also lost to Benito Lopez, which is 
you know, a UFC level opponent. He's back in the UFC after his three year layoff or whatever. But uh, Benito took him out in round one via TKO. I didn't see this fight. I tried to watch the fight like I would try to watch every fight, but I couldn't find it. It's three minutes into the round, so I suppose there's a possibility it's on the ground. But just knowing the fighters and how they fight, I'd say he got finished on the feet. And between that and having seen him get knocked dead by uh, Randy Costa, I do question Journey Newsom's durability. Not his heart and his will, though, and his cardio. Which brings me to Morozov. Morozov's 18-5. and five. Let me just transition right from my other point. I question his durability as well. Morozov, even though he's been submitted three times, that's another thing I question, how he is with uh, someone on his back, which, you know, all three submission losses were deep into the fight, two in round two, one in round three, so there's a cardio aspect there, which got me casting some doubt on his cardio, but, you know, he uh, gets rocked easily, he was finished once by strikes, and it was Josh Reddinghouse, and then in his last fight, he was on roller skates in the first minute against Holly and Paiva. And it didn't look good. But, you know, again, he did win that fight. So he, you know, I guess I can't knock him too much there. I have to praise his recoverability and his cardio. Because he came back, was fighting well inside round one, and then he won rounds two and three. But still, I've seen him on ice skates there. Josh Reddinghouse again knocked him out with a big right hand and then pounded him out, even though Morozov did avenge that loss. And who else uh, knocked? Oh, Douglas Silva D'Andrage. Damn near knocked him out. Knocked him around. And he couldn't get the finish standing, so he took his back and put him in a choke. And that brings me to his submission losses. He's got one to Douglas Silva D'Andrage, one to Movsar Evloev outside the UFC in round three, and one to Umar Namagomedov in one of his, I think, his first UFC fight. All three losses are via rear naked choke, and they're all deep into the fight, like I said. But the defining characteristic of this of his submission losses is that they're all technical submissions. Three out of three are technical submissions, which means he did not tap, which I think. Uh, speaks to Sergei Morozov's toughness. I think he's a lot tougher than he is durable. I think he's a lot grittier than he is durable. He doesn't want to quit. Josh Reddinghouse hurt him badly and pounded him out. The other three guys bested him with a rear naked choke. One of them, he was beaten to death uh, by Douglas Silva D'Andrade anyway, but he still didn't tap. He just went to sleep. You know, and again... I don't have the most faith in him with someone on his back. I do think he's got some holes in his game. And, of course, if his submission prowess was that good, he'd have three more than three victories at this point in his career via submission. But he doesn't. So I do think he's got a weakness there. But it's not going to be exploited like uh, by Journey Newsom in the way that Evloev and Umar Nurmagomedov did. He's going to have to be hurt to be taken down, I think. And I trust Morozov to win this fight because he's got more options. I do think, even if it is purely on the feet, even though I don't trust his chin or ability to take shots, I don't have all the trust in Journey Newsom's chin either because of his two knockouts, even though I haven't seen him on ice skates multiple times. But uh, still, I think Morozov is a better striker. I think if you told me these two guys fought on the feet and no one was knocked down, who won the battle? Morozov did. You know, uh, Morozov got the battle. And even as far as who hits harder, I guess Journey Newsom packs the harder, you know, overhand right. But Morozov's a harder hitter. And I think his chance of knocking out Journey Newsom, if there's any weakness in the chin, it's definitely there. And that's why my prediction for the fight is Morozov wins via TKO late in round one. That's my prediction. Could be round two. But my bets are scattered. I've got Morozov winning... Uh, in rounds one and two, KO plus 1100 and plus 1400. I think those are incredibly disproportionate. They're almost even with his submission odds, which should be way longer. Because if Journey Newsom's the jujitsu guy, where jujitsu comes first, and Morozov is not, he's not the, the refined submission artist, the submission likelihood isn't there. He could, you know, the wrestling likelihood is there. He's going to be on top, which I know increases the submissions and whatever, but I think uh, it would drastically increases chances of getting a finish with ground and pound as opposed to a submission first. So I really like the KO odds, plus 1,100, plus 1,400. And I like Journey Newsom getting a finish in rounds two and three at plus 
1,200 and plus 2,000. The knockout or the submission, it could come either way. Again, Morozov tends to give his back, you know, tends to, that, that's his way, you know, out of a fight typically. But Journey Newsom, I think, cracks. And like I said, he's going to need to crack him to win even by submission, I think. So I like just playing the flat finish. Two and three for Journey Newsom, one and two KO for Morozov. And I like the under as well. Under two and a half rounds, plus 120. The appeal of that is it can go in a parlay. And, of course, it covers both guys getting a finish in the first five-sixths of the fight. Sixths. I can't say that. But um, that's pretty much it. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit, and check out my other videos.